All right, I'm on a Mac and I want to install Homebrew. I Googled install MongoDB on Mac. It took me to this page. There is a um, configuration using the Brew installer, and that's the one that I am going to um, going to kick up here in a second. And if you uh, are going to do this, you already have to have Xcode installed. And um, when you install Xcode, if it's a fresh install, you need to go into the GUI and um, run Xcode once and accept the license or you won't be able to use it. And then you need to install Brew. If you do it in this order, Brew will automatically select the command line options for command line tools, which you'll have to have for Xcode. If not, Google install the command line tools. And then you should be able to do this. Um, and the um, brew is using a special server, a special tap for this, which means that I have to actually tell it I want to use this, and then the thing I want to install is the MongoDB Community Edition version 4.4. That's the same one I have on Linux and Windows. So it'll take a second here. I'll probably cut out a chunk of the video while it does this. But basically, this is going to get me Mongo without the GUI interface, which is Compass, and I have to do a separate install for that. All right, well, the install finally finished. It only took a minute or so. And um, then I need to install MongoDB Compass. That's the GUI. And I'm searching for that. Um, I clicked on the Try It Now button. I'm interested in on-premises, which is available downloads. Compass. And uh, this time it did the right thing. I think I had the wrong right thing before. But I want it as a DMG, a package, and I'll download that. And it's about 100 meg, which won't take long on this system. And then down here in the browser, as soon as it's downloaded, I just double click on that. And it will verify it. And I should get, yes, a little installer like this. A Mac, you just drag it in. On Windows, you get um, an MSI package. And you download and install it. Now, notice one of these things that the reason why Brew doesn't allow you to install Compass or doesn't do it automatically is because Compass is a proprietary application. It is not open source at all. So um, our license for using it is legitimate for class, but it is a proprietary application. MongoDB, one of the things that they've done is they have redone their license with, I think, version 4.2 to try to prevent um, Amazon Web Services from digging into their service business and destroying it by running it on AWS. And consequently, MongoDB is not really an open source database anymore. It has a rather restrictive license in terms of what you can and can't do, but it's legitimate for this class. So let's go over to applications and actually run it. Actually, first of all, let's make certain we've gotten Mongo installed. I'm going to have to actually start it, which is an important step in getting a Mongo install to work. Forgot about that, but yes, with Brew, you, it is not started, it's just installed. So let's actually cut and paste the command to, um, to start it, if I can type correctly here, instead of adding an extra character. Uh, this will persist once you've started a service. Next time you reboot your system, it will be there. Now if I do PS minus EF, I should have Mongo in there. And yes, I have a MongoD running with its default configuration. Now, it doesn't look like I have Mongo in my path, but we will go find it here. No, they don't list it, but it's probably in user local, user local bin, user local something. So let's go and run the find command to go hunt this down, uh, which is find, um, put in a base path to start. If I could type local, that would help a little bit. And then, uh, the name of the thing we're looking for, and yeah, it's in user local bin Mongo, as I suspected. 
This is a new system. It just got repaired. I'm going to have to fix my path, but there you go. But basically that tells me that I have gotten Mongo running and it is connected to it. The default for Mongo is to be completely insecure if you want to see the the comical thing. Well, I'll just bring it up. Here it is. Um, this is in the news a few weeks ago. Uh, that if you don't set it up or it's not behind a firewall, basically it's continuously under attack all over the internet and the defaults are better than they used to be, but still not good for security. So we should be able to bring up Compass the GUI and see it and at least see that we have databases. So let me go into my applications folder and um, in Mongo, there it is. Okay, and this is not right. All right, to run this, you have to go into the system preferences, click on security and privacy, and it should list it right down here, MongoDB Compass app, that you want to open anyway, and open it. And it should, um, it'll give you, you know, some stuff at the beginning. But uh, when you bring up this screen, uh, you might have a help screen that comes up the first time. Um, I always click on fill this out individually, which tells me that I'm going to connect to localhost and what port. And connect, and hopefully after a second you should see a screen that looks like this that shows the administrator and the other pre-built databases inside MongoDB. So let's exit out of that. And I'm going to double check that it will actually run now. And it should run because on a Mac, at least with the security, once you've told it that that's what you want for security, it remembers it and keeps it around. All right, let's uh, actually go into the assignment 01. And there's a bunch of directories where I've written some Go programs. The one we're going to start off with is the one to connect to Mongo. And also, this being a new system, I bet it isn't set up right. It isn't to run, actually, build go. I bet you git pull will not do what I want, because, yeah, it still isn't set up right. There's an environment variable that I need to do. Let's see, is it set? No, it isn't set at all. Okay, I know what to do. Let's do uh, export this environment variable for the minute. It is go 111 modules equals off, so that we can do a... Go get, which will actually pull in local copies of those libraries. And that will allow me to actually build these things. Uh, Go has changed to using a module system that is much nicer, but this code is not set up for modules. So we got to do that the old way and go build. Yes, it compiled this time. And now I've got that con to Mongo. We're going to look at that code. There's problems in it still, but it is enough to connect and make certain we have the default connection. Now we're going to insert first one row. I have a program that inserts a single row. It's hard coded. Compile that and run it. And yeah, now let's go insert multiple rows. The, um, the set of documents actually has the documents in person list.json there. But I'll run it once, and I'll run it a second time, so we insert the doc, double insert the documents. That'll be fun. Uh, you'll see that they're actually all five of them are there. Now let's go back to applications to the to the Mongo um, interface, and bring that back up. Uh, and um, once again, I'm going to fill in the connection, make certain I'm connecting locally, and we're going to see some things. And now you see we have a MongoDB or MyDB database that was created because we inserted something into it. And if we see, want to see what's in it, we have person. And person has some rows that we created. You'll notice that they have individual object IDs, but the key definitely is not unique on name or anything else in here. And um, we just inserted some documents. Um, we have connected to the database, inserted. We're going to take a look at the code on what is in the Go code that does this. 
But this gives you a way to look at it and see it interactively and interact with the database. It does give you interesting information when you look at, at Compass as to sizes and how much it's using and what space it's using. So Compass is a useful tool, although I also use just going into Mongo from the command line and accessing it interactively that way too.